Hi there everyone, my name is Ben and I'm the founder of Ballring Crypto. In this video I want to talk to you about a project that is on the Stellar Network. Before I get into that, as always I must explain to you that I am not a financial advisor. Nothing that you're going to see in this video is financial advice. It is here in an entertainment or information purpose only. It can be an anchor point for you to go and do your own research, but I've been in the space for now four and a half years, yeah, just a little over. I've had some great experiences and some, some significant um, wins and some significant losses in that time. That's given me some experience and with that experience that's led to some wisdom. And with that wisdom I hope to help you navigate the crypto space with the least possible friction, okay? So as long as you don't take anything as, uh, as financial advice, we're on the right track. Now, what captured my eye with this project in the real early days when they had just had their token launch was the reference to a fella called Leonardo da Vinci. You're probably all well aware of him. He is the epitome of Mr. Renaissance, isn't he? If we are to believe uh, our history that the mainstream education tells us, Leonardo lived in the 1400s and died in the early 1500s, and he was a polymath. And what that means is that he was extremely like like a genius, not just a kind of a regular uh, kind of knowledge level. He was a genius in multiple different areas of art, yeah, and creativity. He could go and he would spend hours by the side of a stream in woodlands watching nature getting into almost a hypnotic state where he could see the energy around the subjects that he was actually sketching. So he went on to like a, maybe a different world, a different level. He took his mind somewhere completely else and that's what enabled him to then be able to study at such a deep level, study his subjects at such a deep level. He, you know, we, we still now are amazed at his concepts, his drawings, his sculptures, his paintings, and they are revered the world over, aren't they? So when I saw the reference to Leonardo, who's someone that's fascinated me since my military days of seeing, you know, helicopters and tanks and things, you know, way back in like the, when he was, uh, he was designing these way back in the 1400s. I mean, it was just unheard of to be thinking about helicopters and flight back then. So I was like, okay, this has got my attention because I'm, I'm, you know, fascinated by intelligence and how we can learn new skills and what our limitations are, if they are at all. So I'm, you know, human uh, philosophy, um, psychology, um, and you know, creating our physical realm with our thinking is something that's fascinated me for a long, long time. It's a separate conversation to crypto. You're probably watching this video, you know, to to get you know a deep. A crypto um, educational video, but I think it's also interesting to to, to bring in um, many of these other aspects that that interest us, so that you can kind of build a you know an idea of kind of what drives me and why I'm in the crypto space and what I'm attracted to, as well as you know your own kind of philosophies on things. So so that's kind of the why I've given you a little bit of an introduction there. Now, Nuna Project Art is a project that is being built by across different cultures. So this isn't something that is just like one team in one nation that has one idea. This is a collection of different people from different backgrounds and cultures in different nations who have a desire to share, let's use the word share so that we can understand it at base level, uh, share culture, art, creativity, ideas, innovation, cross borders. And what they've done is they've decided to build out this project on the Stellar Network for many reasons. One of the reasons is Stellar prides itself at being cross-border uh, value transfer. You know, that's what it says that, you know, it's, it's mission statement essentially is. And it, of course, it's very cheap, it's very fast, and it has tools that we can use to build out our um, our creative um, constructs. Yeah, so when we make a, uh, a painting or a drawing or design, we have the tools here that we can use in a very low cost manner. So that will help people in developing nations where some of these creatives 
are from, which I absolutely love because some of the lessons, the greatest lessons that I've personally learned are through travel. I'm a passionate traveler. I've traveled to more than 50 nations around the world. And I learned something in each one of those nations. Everyone that I've been to teaches me a lesson. I think because I'm open to learning. So it's, te it's taught me a lesson. And those lessons have built who I am today because I've I managed to have, you know, a, I've been invited to a wedding in, in the Turkish countryside and experienced their culture there. And I've been to, you know, countries in Asia and I've experienced cuisine and culture and theatre and things there and I've been to galleries and things. And I think all of these experiences all mould who you are and how you look at the world. So, you know, for me, I feel at the moment that we are at a position where we are seeing a another, well, let's not call it a revolution, let's call it an evolution, an evolution that is necessary. Because I think the, 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 um, the contributing factors that have led us to where we are today, they need to change. We need to change how we look at things and how we do things for the good of ourselves and for the good of the planet, you know, and for the good of, you know, everything that's encompassed in that planet. So all of the animals and, you know, the, um, biodiversity that we have out there you know everything I think we should we should be changing how we are so we're in this renaissance period <laughs> takes me back to Leonardo right where if as I said if we are to believe the mainstream education establishments you know, we had this period of time that ended the middle ages and then all of a sudden the creatives came together from all different walks of life, poets and artists and painters and teachers and writers and all of these different people came together and started collectively redesigning the future, reimagining re how things are going to be. And this went over a couple of centuries, the Renaissance period, and there's evidence of the Renaissance paintings and sculptures and architecture all around the world. They came together and what came out of it was a better existence you know, for humanity than what had existed in the mud huts and the medieval swords, spears, etc. days, right? So with that being said, we are now in this new period, but instead of it being kind of like, you know, the the um, the old school renaissance, we've got the new school renaissance, we've got blockchain, we've got internet of things, we've got NFTs, we've got, you know, um, AI, machine learning, and all of these different tools. Now, I firmly believe that these tools in the wrong hands can enslave humanity forevermore. Okay, there's no doubt about that. And I want to make that clear in this video as well. I firmly believe those tools that we have now in the wrong hands can enslave humanity and we can never escape if they're in the wrong hands. However, on the flip side of that, I think those tools that we have our hands on now in the right hands can free humanity and we can have, we can almost have a utopian existence. You know, whatever that resembles to you. Of course, it's subjective. So we can have this freedom. We can have the ability to express ourselves, who we are, with our works, you know, with our, like I say, the, the creations that we're coming up with, uh, with the people that we're surrounding ourselves with, social groups, etc. We can really f flourish and nature can flourish around us. So these tools can be used for good and they can be used for bad, much like anything, much like money, right? Or should I say currency, much like currency can be used for both. But without me kind of going down that rabbit hole too much, I want to pull back into the project and say this is why it's kind of um, why it's really piqued my interest. Because I feel that the, this small group of people at the moment have a potential of building out on a network what we saw en masse back in the Renaissance period in this new period of renaissance of digital renaissance whatever you if you want to call it the, i don't like the fourth industrial revolution because it, it it pegs back to the world economic forum and a lot of the corporations that have got us to where we are today yeah which i don't particularly enjoy so i don't like to use the fourth industrial revolution but i like to use the new renaissance the digital renaissance period as as my way of of describing it Okay, so with all of that being said nuna art project is here we are artists collective i'm going to go through this medium post but i'm not going to bore you with it my intention here is just to highlight some points of what is trying to happen like i said this is an anchor point for you to go and do some research okay 
So Nuna is an art and culture, uh, art and culture part of our life and characterizes the society in which we live. It's important to support them and those who work and are interested in this area today. In fact, many people are still facing the challenge of living with incomes of artistic works, meaning that artists are very str are struggling you know, to make ends meet. They're having to probably go and wash dishes or work in a factory or something and then go and do their passion at night. Well, maybe this is changing now with NFTs and, you know, the ability to express ourselves and to be able to sell that in a very cheap manner, which we can do now on the Stellar Network, as I spoke to you earlier with these tools. So we've got digitalization, artificial intelligence, big data analytics, internet of things, augmented reality, blockchain, and all the things that I've just kind of mentioned as well, represent the fourth industrial revolution. As I said, I don't like that. For me, it's a new digital renaissance, but like, you know, you can use whatever terminology you want. If you want to use world economic terms, then you can. That's not for me. Um, I'm, I'm here in crypto because I, I don't like banking um, and the, the, what the banking sector has brought to the world and all of the big multinationals, etc. I think they've kind of crushed a lot of the culture and the art and that. Um, and the smaller businesses and, you know, the localized kind of outlets, I think they've crushed that. So I don't really want to use their terms even um, because I think that is then, you know, supportive of them when I'm anti that. So, so I just have to kind of just you know, relay that to you so you understand. Uh, our goal is to facilitate the, the access of the artistic community to the science and the new technology. So bringing in people from developing, the way I see this, bringing in people from developing worlds that may not have access to certain you know, key parts of this new Renaissance period uh, and allowing them like to start you know, teaching and allowing them to start using these tools so they can make a better existence. And something I've always been passionate about, I've always been traveling around the world doing charitable work. You know, I've used crypto for many good purposes. And one of the things that I like to say is, I want you people, I don't wanna give you money, I wanna give you people skills so that you can make, make micro economies and those micro economies can then be self-sustained and then those self-sustained micro economies can impact the overall wider economy. So that's kind of how I work from the financial sense. But it, I think it also works here and helping those creatives that are doing those menial jobs or out in the fields or whatever and helping them to say, okay, now we're going to start bringing you a little bit more income because you can use these modern tools. So Nuna is an artistic initiative that works with the intention of Support artistic creation, share and research. Yeah, dissemination, all that means is just is just share. Okay, so it's just share, sharing artistic creation and getting research into the back of it. Promote collaborative work between artists and different disciplines in different spaces. Promote and develop the work of emerging artists belonging to the collective, both inside and outside of the usual artistic promotional channels. Amplify the artistic offer of your city of residence and on NFT platforms, develop culture, cultural, sorry, and artistic education through workshops and talks. So it's quite, it's quite interesting. And, and, and as I said, you know, I think it's a lot of people who go, oh, art, it's airy fairy. We must understand, you know, cinema's art and videography's art and theatre's art and sculpture's art and, you know, painting's art, sketching's art and poetry's art and writing's art. And art is everywhere. Yeah, and, and what you like and what you don't like is entirely up to you, isn't it? I mean, I look at some paintings that are worth like $100 million and go, what a mess. <laughs> I'm sure we've all done that. What a mess that is. I don't even get it. But it's all down to the person's philosophy on life, etc., and what's going through their heads. And it's, I think having these, you can see behind me here, these digital canvases that are usually illuminated. I put NFTs in there. And I like to look at them and I like to try and just drift off. I'm not a TV kind of guy. So I like to try and drift off and think to myself, okay, what was going through their head when they made that? How, what's inspired them to make it? You know, and, and because all of us have got a story, haven't we? We've all got a story. Look at humans walking past you in the street. Everyone's got their own little story. Everyone's got what's holding them back, what's inspiring them, the belief systems and you know, many of the different factors that are impacting their life. So it's really cool to look at pieces. And I could spend hours just kind of looking at things, thinking, what's actually inspired, you know, that to happen? And I know that Leonardo actually inspired the, and I've remembered, inspired the logo 
for uh, for Nuna Project Art. That's what it was inspired by. It was inspired by Da Vinci. So that's pretty powerful. And so what we do, we create a community of artists here, collectors and developers. Uh, our aim is to develop a community where everyone can support and grow in his or her abilities. And there's a support there to help you, which is super. Preserve cultural heritage. Again, I think this is massive. There's lots of modern buildings and you know you kind of look around a lot of the cities don't you and you kind of got this kind of modern area that's a little even though I mean some of the you know the architecture these days isn't too bad it's nothing for me compared to like what we looked at 1800s 1700s and all of that intricate kind of you know, um, stonework, etc. Fascinating, really is amazing. But it's whatever floats your boat, of course. But we're going to preserve the cultural heritage of art. Digital certification, meaning that, you know, artwork is then going to be registered on the blockchain. And the blockchain being, um, you know, immutable, so that, you know, that's, that ownership is with that person. You can't go, oh, hang on a second, we're going to pinch that. It's owned by us. No. That artwork is owned by that person. There's a registration of it right here. So that's a really good thing, especially for like developing nations who historically have been under the boot of the um, global prefects, we'll call them. You know, we're going to come and bring you democracy and help. And on we want some of your culture and paintings and that for art. You, know, you get the idea. You know, it's not a level playing field. So I think with this ownership of... So things you know the British royal family for example own a lot of Indian culture and they weren't given it they took it and why don't they give it back we don't you know have any presence in India like that anymore give it back to the people where it's it was created you know where it means something so that's you know I'm a little passionate about those kind of things um we come down we can see the Nuna token Nuna token I think the sale was around the 21st of um 21st of October. We're now at the end of November, so we're looking at just over a month. And it's going to be used as a, as a medium of exchange for, to acquire art and cultural services, as a unit of account for setting prices, a store of value, a reward token for users, and a help to the governance, I think that would be rather than the government, so help with the governance of the art market. Uh, okay, so start on the 21st of July, 1 billion tokens, fixed supply, um, so we've got immutable flag, blocked account, so we can't have any, you know, um, more tokens created, so we know that's fine. We've got the split down here of the tokenomics, 1 billion, you see most is for the artists and collectors. Community public sale, which was, uh, as I believe, the 21st of um, October. The team here, 14% ecosystem rewards, the Stellar Artistic Foundation, we'll come on to that, and then marketing. So you can see how they're broken down if you want to delve into that. The Nuna ecosystem, capabilities, again, we're going to be touching on things I've already spoken about there, so you guys can come across here and read all of this for yourself. I'll just pause the video and just read the highlighted part. Nunaprojectart.medium.com is where you need to be coming. You can get that. And then you can have a look at the currency here, designed for artistic exchange. So it's the governance token for the Nuna ecosystem. Nuna holders, artists, collectors, and developers participate in the governance of Nuna by exchanging and saving the works of art. I can now switch across to an interesting part of this, which is the Twitter. Yeah, so Nuna Project Art Twitter. They've got a nice following of just over 1,200 um, followers. And down here now, um, we have this post. Uh, no, this one, sorry. Uh, do you already know that you can sell and buy art on Light Mint with Nuna? So NFTs are now available for you to purchase. Uh, on Nuna, and you can also sell artwork as an artist on Lightmint, right? So, sorry, on Nuna, I meant you can use Nuna to sell your artwork, and you can obviously um, create um, or you can buy um, art pieces from the Nuna uh, artists with Nuna tokens. So now Nuna is all of a sudden a currency, and you get a 15% reimbursement. In England, we call this cashback. You get, if you buy your uh, artwork with Nuna, you get 15% off, 15% discount or cashback in Nuna. 
So you, you essentially pay 85% of the price, don't you? Because you're paying a Nuna and you get some back. So you only pay an 85%, which is great. I don't haven't seen any other project offering these kind of discounts. And then you can do that with um, sending your transaction hash to their Discord, I believe, right? So that's something to have a look at. Oh, it says it here. Every time you buy sell art with Nuna, send the transaction link to our Discord dedicated channel. And you click onto this and you say that I've bought this piece of art. Hey, presto, you then can get that Nuna uh, or that percent, 15 percent back. Interesting. If we come on to Light Mint, and we just open up the Light Mint page here that I clicked onto earlier, we can see we have different pieces of art from different uh, artists that are selling for Nuna. We've got bids, we've got you know prices that you can buy it right now from different artists across the Light Mint platform. Light Mint being the number one NFT platform on Stellar Network. So we can go and buy those. If we buy those, get the transaction hash, send it into the Discord, get our 15% back. Happy days, yeah, perfect. There's a lot to be kind of taken on board there because I've given you quite a lot of depth of my feeling towards it and also, you know, the, uh, the high level. Uh, I, I went into their Telegram can okay, they have a Telegram, active Telegram? Went into the Telegram and I was, okay, can break this down to me so like Johnny Age 3 can understand this project because we do have a slight uh, cross-culture psychology challenge where there's a, there's a Eastern European presence, there's South American presence where English isn't the first language. You know, they're, they're, they're not English speaking first language. Uh, so it's a case of, okay, or let me just try and understand it from my take being English. You know, what are we trying to get at? So what I've got here is I've just got a, a, a document, a, a message from uh, one of the founders. And uh, let's not open that. Let's open this one instead. Okay, so this is just a message that I've just copy and paste into a doc. Let's close that off. We don't need that one. And this, if I move it across, um, is his response when I asked, well, just explain it to Johnny H3. So the most important thing for us is that our project wants to transmit, preserve art and culture. Yeah, so that's the most important thing. The first part now, I shouldn't have highlighted it all. Most important things, preservation of art and culture on the blockchain. We discovered how blockchain technology is the best way for that and Stellar Network is the best option to do it. How we are doing it, we are beginning to explore all the uses of NFTs to achieve our goal. Initially, uh, we are going to create a community of artists so that they can get to know the Stellar Network better and start earning with their art. So it's creating the NFT pieces, selling those pieces, using Luna as a currency, and then taking their, that Luna, listen to me, Nuna, I keep saying Luna, Nuna tokens, um, taking the Nuna and then you, flipping that into their local currency, XLM, take it to an exchange, you can do whatever you want, can't you? So you can actually then cash it out and spend it in the real world, getting your groceries for your family. Okay, so over time, we plan to expand the currency and implement it with new blockchain development options, such as the DAO, Distributed or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, and Metaverso, I presume that is Metaverse, Games and NFT Exchange. Yeah, Nuna token uses a uh, token of uh, governance with holders and traders. Well, of course, if it's a DAO, we're going to need to be able to stake it to make decisions on, oh, maybe we should use some of these tokens to buy this piece of physical art that's in a gallery for other people to enjoy, but we own it, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, that's, that's certainly an option. But also uh, maybe supporting artists in different nations and, you know, helping to buy their pieces and going to give them a platform so they can sell their pieces. I think this is kind of where they're going with it in uh, in, in the real world, not the NFT world, the real world, right? Uh, the, well, it's the real world, of course, uh, in, in the digital space, but you know what I mean in the physical reality rather than a virtual sense. Okay, token of governance, work token for art and artistic creation and financing, utility token for growing ecosystem that we are designing. Uh, our ultimate goal is to make Nuna the token used by all the people related to art and culture. Some quite big words there. Our ultimate goal is to make Nuna the token used by all people related to art and culture. Well, yeah, I think that there's that many, isn't there? There's probably a thousand people in my little area there where I live 
that are deeply invested into art and culture. So to say to everyone, that's one hell of a mission to go on, isn't it? To make everyone aware of Nuna and how it can be utilised. But very much like the Renaissance period, it spread like wildfire. Several people started it and it spread out and people started to understand that you know, they can have you know, access to these new tools in the you know digital renaissance that they can uh, access artworks that have been purchased to be preserved that they can be supported by a wonderful supportive uh, stellar artistic foundation where some of the members are, are friends of mine and they have huge contributions to how blockchain is evolving art is evolving on the blockchain nfts and all sorts of things that they're, they're really close to close to me so uh, I get to speak to them and you know discuss different topics with them on a almost daily basis very very exciting let's have a look at last couple of uh, the bits with regards to uh, this first high level uh, view of um, of Nuna we've got um, which one is this the auction report was let's just check the date oh, it was the 21st I just wanted to have a look to make sure that uh, it was the 21st of October, so you know the kind of date um, that the uh, the token sale went on. So we're just over a month from that. Um, and if we just finally just have a little scoot into uh, the Discord here, you'll see Nuna Project Art here. And there's different channels. We can see that uh, they've got this uh, Stellar um, Artistic Foundation. And the uh, Stellar Artistic Foundation here... Uh, it gives us a little bit more of an idea. So, Stellar Artistic Foundation wants to become an international centre of culture and artistic creation in the Stellar Blockchain Network. We want to carry out an extensive programme that includes exhibitions, festivals, music, cinema, audiovisual projects, NFTs, crypto art, conferences, conversations, workshops, residencies for artistic uh, artists and educational programmes. Now, for me... That's everything we've, well, I mentioned to you before, pretty much, well, with a few additions. You know, that's a hell of a lot of people involved in that, aren't they? You know, so when I was saying to you about you know, the Nuna token being, or the Nuna project being there for everyone that's involved in art, that's fantastic because it means that lots and lots of people are going to be able to be onboarded into this process. Whether you are a collector and someone that is you know, mesmerised by certain artistic pieces such as myself, but I can't draw a stick man in terms of drawing but i can do videos and i can do explanations and all this kind of thing voice notes and you know tutorials so that's artistic in its own right isn't it so of course this would apply to me as well as a creator not just as a collector i hope that kind of makes some sense no matter what we do what we enjoy chances are it's included in this project meaning there's a lot of people that can come into the stellar artistic foundation and a lot of people then that can be utilizing the token that can be bringing you know being a token holder that can be transacting value using nuna it is very low key at the moment only a small amount of people in the community as it starts spreading and you know we start talking about it and people you know watch these kind of videos and get a little bit more of a an idea of what's being created then the word spreads and of course then more and more people are going to be going okay that makes some sense i want to hold some i want to be able to get involved in some of the you know the dow and the governance and the ownership and all of the other stuff i think it's going to be pretty fantastic but it's not going to be a pump and dump if you are after a pump and dump in terms of a crypto project i think you're in the wrong place i think this is going to be over years not over days that we are going to see significant prolonged price appreciation. It's going to be a year's thing. So if you're happy to you know, look at an investment maybe over the space of a three to five year plan, could well be onto something here. But again, it's not financial advice. Uh, so the SAF, or Stellar Artistic Foundation, encourages the encounter, the exchange, the uh, contamination between different models of cultural production in a way that facilitates interdisciplinary experiences. Let's break this down because I do feel, I do feel, because I'm, I'm always trying to be, you know, as uh, open-minded as possible, that with some of the language that is used here, it can lose people at base level. So what we're saying here is it's encouraging the cross breeding, a hybrid of cultures. So let's clash 
you know, kind of Aztec and North American Indian together. You know, this is what I'm seeing. You know, what comes out, what comes out of that, you know, mix of those different cultures. And you kind of then start going, okay, what, you know, how can we take North African and we've got that North African art and then we blend that with Eastern European. And what, what, what do we come out with? So this is what I'm kind of seeing here. And I want to try and, you know, break down the uh, vocabulary that's being used here and try and explain it always, like I said, in Johnny Age 3 terms so that it actually makes some sense. Linking artistic knowledge with scientific and technological research. What did we say? You know, we've got that turn now, that renaissance period where we're coming into, you know, the left and the right brain coming together, smashing together. What's going to happen when we've got people like myself that are right brainers, creatives, but hate strategy coming together with people who are meticulous, who are strategy driven. And those people kind of get what's going to be the outcome of that. That's how I'm seeing this, this kind of hybrid fused together. What are we going to get? And the metaverse is going to be a very real example of that coming together. A space that encourages inclusion, diversity, which is obviously big things at the moment, aren't they? You know, and, and we, Stella prides itself on this word, inclusion. And I think that, I hope that Noon is going to be one of those projects that is going to be an icebreaker in that inclusion because of its already great mix of different creeds and cultures contributing to the project. I think it's already showing itself now that you know lots of people are having a voice from different areas, no matter what their background, no matter what their financial circumstances or experience. It's the centre of a conversation debate to promote the most contemporary creation, critical thinking, and contribute to the renewal of artistic ideas and languages. Let's leave the video there. I think that's a great sentence to finish it off with. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And like I said, this has not been my usual. I didn't want to do a usual kind of crypto take on this video. I, I wanted to kind of blend it with my own ph philosophical kind of stance on how I'm impacted on projects. I am a investor in this project. I have asked how I can best help with this project and doing an English speaking video with my perspective on the project was what was you know, voted on as my best contribution to date. So I thought I will do that. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you now kind of understand my take on things a little bit more and why I feel this project has legs over the next five years. So thank you once again for watching and I look forward to joining you in future videos about the Nuna project when they develop the roadmap and some of these key features that we're hearing about are starting to be developed and we're starting to see more people coming to the community and you know the greatness that it has you know this um, kind of untapped greatness that it has within it start exploding out take care everyone it's great speaking to you and I'll see you soon bye bye